Welcome to another All-22 Tuesday, a collaboration between First Down Playbook and USA Football. I'm Keith Grabowski, uh, Director of Football Operations at USA Football and host of the Coach and Coordinator Podcast. Joining me is Charlie Coiner, who is the founder and CEO, former NFL coach. Uh, First Down Playbook, Charlie, great to be talking ball again. Yeah, Keith, happy Thanksgiving weekend. Good to uh, Good week for football. And uh, joining us as well to add his Commentary and analysis is Zach Dunn, a coordinator of content at USA Football and an analyst himself. Zach, good to have you here again on a Tuesday. Can't wait, Keith. All right, let's take a look at a special teams play from Dallas and the New England Patriots this past Sunday. Yeah, Keith, we actually are going to talk about two special teams plays that showed up this past weekend, one on Saturday and one on Sunday. And the reason that uh, I chose to, to draw these up and we'll look at the video is because I think they're very relevant things regardless of the level of football you coach, high school, college, or NFL. Now you're looking at a spread punt formation, uh, obviously in the NFL. And uh, as you're gonna see when we go to the video here, anybody that watched that game, it was a brutal uh, wind, brutal rain. And uh, at this point in the game, New England had already blocked the punt for Dallas. Uh, against Dallas. And so uh, essentially what goes on here is that, and the Patriots always very well coached, have schemed up Dallas to where they have put Burkhead number 34 up to cover Dallas's right uh, gunner off the ball a little bit, as you'll see in the video. And essentially when that happens, they bought the corner in and they've got bad numbers. So instead of just, you know, zoning it off and sending your snapper to one side and your personal protector to the other and telling your um, punter just to get it out of there because there's no returner back there. Uh, what happened was Dallas got into a numbers game, and which is exactly what uh, New England wanted. So they end up bringing in the, their right gunner, number 29. When that happens, Burkhead just goes across the field. He's still the returner that's going to run back and get the ball late. He comes over and covers the left gunner. 27 comes in, so they still have bad numbers. So they end up calling timeout, and then they ended up trying to do it again. And 83, as we're looking at on the left, actually came in motion when he was on the line of scrimmage. So it was a hot mess for uh, Dallas. Now, here's the point that I want to make before we even get to the video. Okay, yeah, none of you out there in high school, or very few of you in high school and college, are using this formation, but. As we get later in the year, some of you northern schools, and uh, it can happen in Texas too, you get in a game and you've got weather conditions, you need to be ready that there's nothing that guarantees that that punt return team is going to cover your gunners or your white, you know, your people you got flexed out, even in shield punt. Because uh, at the end of the day, if the wind is blowing and you don't have a, a, a guy that can throw it back there, then you might get in a situation where even with your shield, they end up trying to get five or six to your shield um, and, and don't cover those guys. So uh, let, let's take a look at the video here and uh, you'll see, you know, Dallas pretty frustrated. There's not even a play here really, but just trying to make the point that, and you can look at the rain coming down right there and you can see it's, it's going as we look at it left to right. So this has been well thought out from a standpoint of if we get this situation, now you can see Burkhead now, you know, he's coming all the way over here. Now they've got real problems. They're always going to be a guy short, okay? If they'd have bought – if Dallas had bought both gunners in, at that point, Burkhead would have run backwards. He would have run back to return the punt. But they were just trying to get them to get them to do that, and they ran out of time and called timeout. So we don't need to dwell on it much more than that, but I just – you know, we, we are looking at a game right here that was decided with special teams. I mean, we can say what we want to about New England's defense. They're really good, but guess what? They blocked the punt, and that's the way they scored the touchdown. And so uh, you watch it every weekend, and I guarantee you if it's happening at the NFL and the college level, it's happening in your playoffs at your high schools too. So, Zach, let's go on over here and take a look, if we can, at another situation in the special teams. And that was in the Georgia-Texas um, A&M game. And so we've just cut it down here. Essentially, uh, Georgia is leading in the third quarter. I want to say 16 to three or 19 to three, and uh, Kirby Smart calls an onside kick. And I know the the media and, and the announcers 
you know, what, what's going on? Why would you do that? And uh, what a brash move. But the point I want to make for any coaches out there, you know, everybody's got really good at kicking the ball back in the corner and good for them. It's, it's very smart to do that. Uh, one of the first teams I remember doing it the best, the people have been doing it for a long time, was Urban Meyer's Ohio State teams, and they still do it. What happens when you do that, you're going to find that the kickoff return teams are going to pack down more and more to try to get blockers in there. And so what's going on here is Georgia's doing the same thing. At any point on a kickoff unit, if you're coordinating it, and you're number two, can outflank the kickoff return team's number one. Like 23 is outside of number eight here. You've got a heck of an opportunity for an onside kick. Now, there were other problems with the Texas A&M return team, too, because we don't have a John up here, but everybody else was well deep. And so as you're going to see, and anybody watched the game, this uh, the number two for uh, Georgia didn't even really have to block number eight, but uh, three just didn't get on it. So let's take a look at it. I think it's just a good lesson. It's a good pitcher to have if you're going to coach special teams, whether it be the kickoff return team or the kickoff team. So you can't see it as much from there, but number two is does have number eight out flank. Now eight turns and runs. Now you can you can tell that Georgia knows they've got a little void area back in there, right around the four, the uh, the uh, far 45 yard line too, and this is. It, it couldn't be done better by an NFL kicker than what this kid does right here. He just sets it down right on the 45. And you can take a look. There's an end zone copy here that will show you a little bit better. And we don't need to dwell on it. Special teams plays aren't always the most fancy. But there is a lesson to be learned here. If you can, you know, you can see number two there, if you had to, could get a helmet on that kid. And so that's all you really need. If, if that happens, there's nobody around it. But this is, this is just well positioned and uh, I think a good special teams lesson to learn with everybody packing their coverages to one side of the field or the other. With all the plays we do, uh, the great resource that is available is First Down Playbook. So you're going to be able to see all of these, all the plays we've been drawing all season long and I don't know what it is now, 35,000 plays that Charlie's drawn up. Charlie, where can our viewers uh, get access to and learn more about First Down Playbook. Absolutely, Keith. If you want to find out what First Down Playbook is all about, you want to go to firstdownplaybook.com. That's spell it out, F-I-R-S-T-D-O-W-N. If you want to look at our coaches' community site, you can go to blog.firstdownplaybook.com. And this is the time of year where coaches are changing jobs, some getting hired, unfortunately some getting fired, but we always change jobs. And we're working hard right now with a lot of our coaches transferring their playbook and their information from one school to the other. We just want to let you know if you're a coach and you're a first-down playbook coach, your plays go with you when you change jobs.